Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy from Headlock. Check this out. I do appreciate you guys actually taking five to 10 minutes out your day to watch some of the videos that I have on YouTube. It actually does mean a lot to me because I do put in a lot of hard work and time to make sure that these videos are going the way they should. So it's, it's meaningful to me. I, I wanna continue to work and put these videos in. Um, I do see quite a large number of views on my videos, so it really does help and it really, it really pushes me forward to you know get more and more videos out and more mi meaningful videos, videos to get a better message out. So when I first started, I didn't know exactly how to put videos together, but when I got better and better equipment, I started paying more and more attention on how to put out, out better videos. Um, I started seeing the numbers rise and rise and rise. Um, the largest of what I've seen so far is 1,200 views, and that was for my uh, DDJ400 as well as my Elsys VI25 MIDI controller. So the views definitely help, and I definitely appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna try to keep pushing more videos out, and then I'm gonna see. I'm gonna try to get a much more better message out for this particular channel. This is my 29th video, but if you watch some of the previous channels that I have, which was an average audio file and social takeout. It's um, closer towards, uh, I believe, 70 or 80 or whatever it is. I haven't really fully counted, but because I don't have a lot of time to stop and really articulate what's going on, for the most part, um, I try to put as much into it as I can. Even though I record for hours and hours and hours, I do, like I said, I do appreciate you guys taking the time out while you're sitting on the toilet or you're eating food or whatever it is. It doesn't really matter. You're taking five to 10 minutes out your day to watch some of my videos. Now, I try to post like twice a week to somewhere between once to twice a week, maybe three times a week, depending on um, how quick I get through the editing process, in addition to all the stuff, all the other stuff that I have actually going on. So I'm working as hard as I can, I'm working as quickly as I can, I'm going as fast, I'm, I'm going as, I'm trying to cram as much as I can in there, because I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to see a whole long, drawn out, two, three, four, five, six hour video. I'm pretty sure you guys just only want to see like a summary or a highlight, and that's why I've actually been trying to been uh, focus on. So, but like I said, I appreciate it. You guys rock. You guys help me uh, get the stuff going. It really, it really definitely helps. So. For this one, I'm going to talk about the demonetizations that's been going on, on YouTube. So let's go ahead and start the show. There has been a lot of reports, or should I say numerous reports that's been going around about YouTube doing the demonetization process for a whole bunch of independent creators that put videos on YouTube. Basically what's going down is, is that a lot of these aspiring independent creators on YouTube are getting their videos demonetized for almost next to nothing uh, reason. YouTube guys! So I've been kind of so on um, putting more and more videos out onto YouTube because of the stories that have been going on. When I started getting copyright claims and blocks and things like that, I, I started to pay attention on exactly what, what, what is happening towards YouTube. And I've noticed that I actually started been doing that since uh, 2012 and started wrapping up in uh, 2017, 2016 and 2017. I've been kind of watching, I've been kind of learning, I've been trying to analyze exactly why YouTube started demonetizing videos. And it actually turns out it's not for just technical or logistical reasons is also more towards moral reasons. It's really easy to get mad at YouTube at this point, right? Look at all this stuff that's happening on the platform. YouTube is on a massive decline. The community is just more unhappy with YouTube than ever. YouTube is very broken. YouTube is just fundamentally fucking broken. YouTube is being fucking shitty. The system is flawed. Hey YouTube, what the fuck? It's just ridiculous. It just really is. YouTube, this is just ridiculous. It has not been this bad ever, I don't think. I think it's at its lowest point that it's ever been. YouTube is just constantly screwing us over every single time we upload a video. YouTube just likes to fuck you right up the ass all the goddamn time. So say for example, you have a small creator talking about a Las Vegas mass shooting, or a, Las Ve a video in Las Vegas on the mass shooting. Or it could be about 9-11 plane attacks. It could be anything almost in the book that doesn't seem to fit the narrative of something of what could be close matching towards this. YouTube is basically trying to pass itself 
off as a sort of family channel. That's what I'm understanding. And it's pushing a lot of the other, like it's, it's pushing a lot of the, the small creators out. And what I've noticed is they started bringing in like some of the more corporate partners in like ABC and uh, CNN and all those other big name parties who got like, you know, big money to basically money to burn. The other community is unhappy with YouTube. YouTube has a YouTube problem. I'm done with this shit. I'm done with the YouTube's format. I'm done with this YouTube shit that I've had to deal with. I want nothing to do with this platform. Uh, I'm disgusted. I never want to want another cent from Google. The state of YouTube is anti-creator. As the creator, that's incredibly frustrating. It's frustrating. I hope this is communicating to you that I'm very frustrated. My biggest frustrations currently lie with YouTube. It just feels like YouTube is isn't willing to work with creators. I feel like there's no appreciation from YouTube for its creators. YouTube doesn't do enough to support their community. It's so disconnected with the community and its creators. Yeah, it just feels like YouTube don't want to comment on the issue. They don't want to they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to they don't want to even acknowledge it. YouTube just seems like they're not even trying. I don't think that they're doing enough for the community. They don't give up. That's fine. They don't care. I genuinely don't feel YouTube does enough to take care of and look after their community. You know, they talk about the mass shootings all the time, but they almost never get demonetized. But so it's always the small creators because they don't have the money to spend as much as these, you know, corporate partners do. So demonetization has impacted a bunch of people. We're talking about hundreds of uh, trendy creators on YouTube. And so they're having to find other platforms where they are actually free to post the videos and not have to go through that process of, you know, basically fighting to get the monetization back. I've just been kind of analyzing, kind of watching and kind of determining whether or not if I should just go full YouTube and, you know, really fully gain the, the monetary benefaction off of that. This would be pretty much the whole point of saying, you know what? It really is time to like diversify your income. So it's not just the monetize the YouTube monetization. You also want to use the exposure that you get from YouTube to also get the endorsements and stocks and things like that. Merch merchandise. You know you want to diversify the income as far as that goes in case you lose the demonetization process. Or you can also make other videos free and still get the endorsements and things like that. So the point of what I'm saying is is that I've seen a lot of users on both Twitter and YouTube started crying foul because of what YouTube is doing behind the scenes. YouTube is not really giving an explanation on as to why videos are getting demonetized. They just give like a vague answer to what I'm understanding. We're pretty much at the point where it's like a lot of folks don't even want to create videos specifically for YouTube. So they want to go to like Vimo and VK and a couple more new platforms start popping up like DTube and Rumble and a library, which is a new, which is a relatively new one that I just found out, and Instagram and things like that. And Twitter actually started putting on, putting on a native uh, video platform for uh, for it as well. Because YouTube allows for you to post all the way up to like 10 to 12 hours worth of video footage on there, whether it's edited or not, onto YouTube. Whereas like you have Instagram is only like a minute. Then you have like Facebook was like a, I guess an hour, two hours or whatever it is. I don't exactly know the numbers for that. Uh, Twitter is like maybe half hour. The live stream's kind of limited as well, depending on who you talk to. Um, I don't try to do the live streaming as much, simply due to the fact that it takes about a lot of bandwidth data. So I just try to edit the videos and just, you know, put it onto like one or two gigs and just be done with it. <laughs> I don't know why I keep dropping this down. YouTube is basically going off like a, a narrative. So the narrative basically means is that if the videos that you have isn't necessarily aligning to what they want you to post, kind of like Disney, then they're just basically going to, I don't want to say they, they're firing you per se, they're just basically pulling the views, the, subscri um, the, the subscribers, and, and the, the exposure and all that stuff from your channel. YouTube doesn't want anything but PC content on their platform. You're talking about being your authentic self anymore. You literally can't be that on YouTube anymore. If I change my channel to abide by what YouTube thinks is fit, I lose the essence of what is me. Why even call it YouTube anymore? There's nothing you about it. There's no soul left. There's no backbone left. And there are quite a few cases where like the whole channel gets demonetized or blocked or banned, or whatever it is. 
So it really depends on the creator of the channel and it's on a case by the case by case basis. I think YouTube should be a little bit more open and equal to not just the, the big name partners like Jimmy Kimmel and a few others. It's also, it also should have more openness and diversification with all the independent creators as well who are not getting, you know, 10, 20, 30 million dollars on or basically an advertisement so i mean i'm not youtube to be honest with you but i do think that it needs a little bit more diversification it needs a little bit more uh, level playing field for everybody i shouldn't be picking and choosing favorites as far as rules and guidelines and more um, moral reasons go it should be just like it really should be equal to everybody i'm not gonna say that it should push out all the corporate partners but everybody has an opinion everybody has something that they want to share to the world and they shouldn't have to sit there and be like oh yeah well uh, i have to actually fight to keep my youtube channel going it just needs to be a fair playing field now the only reason why i even came across the story in the first place is that i've seen a lot of creators actually talk about this i've seen a lot of people talk about this i've seen a lot of people cry over this so me as a creator kind of just kind of like they step back and take a, pitch, pit, a big picture and just kind of evaluate exactly what I want to do with this channel so I don't get my channels demonetized because I've already gotten uh, copyright claims and blocks and things like that. And speaking of YouTube censorship. At the moment we are seeing censorship on uh, YouTube. There is a huge, huge problem with YouTube censoring policies. YouTube has been doing a thing where they've been hyping, demonetizing, age gating and removing our content. It turns out uh, that YouTube has blocked the channel. I know from the last two videos about this topic I've uploaded, if I upload it to my YouTube channel, it will just get suppressed. I post a video and it gets blocked. YouTube is actively suppressing and banning legitimate flat earth content. YouTube hides and restricts our reach. Channels are being throttled. Users are being unsubscribed repeatedly without their knowledge from channels they subscribe to. Users continue commenting that my channel has disappeared from their subscription list. Not only was my most recent video demonetized, but many people were complaining that it never showed up for them to begin with. And it's really kind of hard to really determine what to actually use as far as the content goes, because I like actually putting a background music so it doesn't have a whole bunch of you know silence while I'm basically talking to you guys. So I think the content ID is kind of ridiculous. You know, IDing somebody else's track and then you know forcing uh, a claim so they can get money off of it's, it's too technical. But I think that it's a little bit more. There's there's way more spider webs than what it needs to be for a independent creator. Now see, with my videos, if I wanted to, I could create the mu music myself, but it takes additional time to actually put the music together, which, or this of which, I, I would have to take extra time just to make, make a track for each and every video. So, it's not the side I don't wanna do it, it's just, it takes a little bit more time, and you may not see a video except for maybe like once a week or something like that, maybe twice a week, depending on how quickly I go through things. So I try to highlight stuff, I try to just keep it simple and keep it straightforward so you understand the message, and I'll try to show my face as often as either. So like, for example, Casey Neistat, he tried to do the, I, he did the daily vlogs, and you have Unbox Therapy, he does like daily tech videos, your average consumer, and market brownie and Brett Conti and all these other all these other guys they do I don't say daily stuff but you see them all the time because they are, they are centered towards this the, the tech side of things I specialize in audio so it's a little bit more different because people love professionalism and audio everybody loves audio stuff but that's another that's another video for another time demonetization so really hurts the independent creator because and when they put when they make the videos and somebody pays them to make those videos and then you take that away from them now they actually have to go they, they actually lose the time that they have or should i say the much needed time that they have after getting paid to do something like that now they have to figure out how to come up with all the maintenance costs like rent and food and things like that and they want to have to go get another job they basically have to go get a service job just to cover that and it cuts down on all the hours that they can actually put in to make those videos. I think with. the policies need to change. I need. I think the, the the structure needs to also change. It's just one out of a million opinions that it, that uh, indie creators. If it will change, I would never know. But 
I'm going to continue to post on YouTube. I'm going to continue to um, educate you guys and, and you share my experiences with you. But at this point, uh, YouTube's kind of going the corporate route now. Um, it's like it's acting more like a television. So if you're watching like CBS, they have like uh, their CBS channel and they have like full of ads. That's pretty much where YouTube is going, except it's like the on demand version. Um, and then you have like YouTube Red, which is like the pay per view version. So something, I mean, YouTube definitely needs to go back to its roots. SoundCloud too. SoundCloud needs to go back to its roots. It needs to be a community open, open source site because its content ID and copyright claims is way more vampiric than what it needs to be. I mean, you're basically telling other people to remove the content over something that, I mean, as long as somebody gives the credits, that's all that matters. You know, you can't, you know, you shouldn't just tell somebody, oh yeah, well, remove this because th this, there was some jargon information. There are a lot of influence out, influencers out there that are not musicians and vice versa. So, you know, a musician may need a media influencer to promote that music or you know if you spoken word if whatever that's where i was getting with that because i also give inspiration to those that also want to become a youtuber or somebody that wants to get videos or basically get videos or document their highlights and, and, and their stories and put on youtube it's kind of discouraging to them as a potential creator to get those kind of videos on there so people can see them. It's like, it's, it's very discouraging to all the new folks as well as damaging to all the, the old folks, the old creators. So it, it definitely needs the change. It definitely needs a change. That's, that's pretty much what I'm getting with that. Uh, how much time? Okay, 14 minutes. So that's pretty much all of what I'm going to say about that, really. I'm going to drop a link in the description. So if you, you should be in the details below on the video that uh, I reference, it will have like some of the biggest influence that are out there. Just so watch the video, see, and you know, make your own determination on what it should be. Also, tell me what you think. What what do you, what do you think about the rampant and broad across the board demonetization for YouTube? You know, I want I want to know in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next video.